a deceptive chameleon than that which we know as love. For love and hate are kindred things, each bound by the tensile strength of a silken cord that slowly but inevitably strangles those caught in the web of obsession. And so the story of Surrender is Farewell, starring Joan Loring. and the huge waiting room is silent and empty. Empty, that is, except for a small figure huddled in a far corner. There, a young girl, her pretty face streaked with tears, sits writing a letter, a letter of surrender and farewell, in which she pours out a pitiful story of three lives made untenable by the irresistible powers of one mind filled to overbrimming with the slow poisons of an insanely jealous obsession. Dear Linda, in 30 minutes I shall be on my way back to Indiana. It is hard to realize that it's been only two months since that day I saw New York for the first time. The day when Roger and I drove north out of the city to his home in the rolling Connecticut countryside. We were so happy with no premonitions of what lay ahead. Just around the next bend, you'll be able to see it, Carol. Your new home. Our new home, darling. Oh, Roger, I'm so happy. <laughs> when I left here last month on that business trip, I never thought I'd be returning with a wife, particularly such a pretty one. Are you sorry? What do you think? <laughs> hey, there, you can sit over there, over on that little hill. Oh, Roger, it's beautiful. You like it? I'm overwhelmed, darling. I never dreamed that someday I'd have a home like that. For the woman I love, nothing is too good. <laughs> You're all I really want, Roger. Hey, here's the drive. Won't be long now. Oh, I've never seen such trees. And that lawn. Linda's probably watching us out of the front window, just dying to get a glimpse of her new sister-in-law. What's she like, Roger? Oh, she's considerably older than I am. Ever since my parents died 20 years ago, she's been more like a mother than a sister. I bet she's sweet. Well, you have to know Linda to appreciate it. She has a few funny ideas. Roger, I just know we'll get along. Oh, sure. Well, this is it. Cameron Domicile. Shall we go in? We will. After you kiss me. Oh, Carol, darling. One's enough, Mr. Cameron. Come on, let's go in. <laughs> you killed Joy? <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Linda now. Hello, Linda. Hello, Roger, dear. I received your wire. Bet you were surprised to learn the big news, huh? That would be an understatement. This, I presume, is Carol. Hello, Linda. Isn't she just the way I described her, Linda? Let's say she's exactly what I expected. Shall we go in? Linda, you can't possibly know how excited I am about all this. You would do well, my dear, to restrain some of that exuberance. I considered your exhibition in front of the house just now. Most improper. But, Linda, I only kissed her. I'm not blaming you, Roger. Hereafter, Carol, remember that you're a Cameron and conduct yourself accordingly. Well, I'm sorry if I... We won't discuss it further. The door, please, Roger. Well, not a thing has changed since I left. Of course not. We shall leave in exactly 25 minutes, Carol. I assume you'd like to change your clothes. Well, I think if I just wash up a bit, I'll It's to... all very well to wear one's oldest suit while traveling. But I think it's hardly suitable for dinner. But I... Yes, Linda. I'll expect you for dinner at 6 o'clock sharp. Oh, Roger, she doesn't like me. Oh, nonsense, darling. She doesn't even know you yet. One's oldest suit, she said. Roger, this is the newest and most expensive piece of clothing I own. Oh, we'll remedy that, honey. Tomorrow I'll turn you loose in the city and let you buy the finest wardrobe money can buy. <laughs> and, uh, don't you worry about Linda. <laughs> But I did worry about you, Linda. I couldn't disregard the smoldering animosity in your eyes. The edge of resentment in the tone of your voice. I tried at first to tell myself that I was merely imagining things, but... The next morning after Roger had left for his office... Well, Carol, are you satisfied with your new home? I'm in love with it. And I have the most marvelous idea for new curtains in the dining room. New curtains? Mm -hmm. I thought yellow would be nice. 
to replace those rather drab maroon ones. I selected those maroon curtains, Carol. I furnished this house from carpets to kitchenware, and nothing will be changed. But, Linda, I am Roger's wife now. We may as well get one thing straight at the outset, Carol. I've been running this house for Roger for 20 years, and I don't intend to stop now. All right, Linda. We won't argue about it today. Nor any other day. I thought you were going shopping. I am. I was just about to get ready. Tell me, how much money did Roger give you this morning? Now, really, I don't think that that's any... I mean... You don't think it's any of my business? Is that what you were going to say? Well, I didn't intend to be that abrupt. I'm sorry. Carol, Roger worked hard for his money. And I'm not going to stand by and see him squander it because he happens to be temporarily blinded by his emotions. Are you calling our marriage a blinding of emotions, Linda? Is uh, this your purse here on the table? Linda, you have no right to do that. Let's see. Hmm, fifty dollars. Well, that's not unreasonable. Fifty dollars? But Roger gave me two hundred and fifty. I wouldn't lie to you, Carol. Here, you can see for yourself. Yes. That's strange. I put the money in there just 30 minutes ago, and you were the only one in the room. Are you implying that I stole money from your purse? Oh, no, Linda, I didn't mean that. That's I... precisely what you meant. You were accusing me. Believe me, Linda, you misinterpret what I said. You can be sure that Roger will hear of this when he comes home tonight. And you can also be sure that he won't be pleased to learn that his sister was called a thief in her own home. <laughs> I was confused and unhappy. And I wanted so desperately to please you, but it seemed that I was meeting your disfavor at every turn. I left the house and purposely stayed away until late afternoon so that we wouldn't be left alone together. But when I arrived home, Roger still hadn't returned. Is that you, Carol? Yes, Linda. You're a little late, dear. I'm sorry. I, I lost track of the time. Well, we'll have to hurry to have dinner ready by the time Roger arrives. All right, Linda. I'll, I'll start dinner now. Uh, before you leave, Carol, uh, there's something I'd like to show you. Yes? Over there on the mantel. It's Roger's most prized possession. You mean that vase? He never told me about it. It was made in Tibet over 1,000 years ago. Oh. It's been in the family for five generations. It's beautiful. I can understand why Roger values it. You can't see it from there. I'll get it for you. Here. Oh, it's lovely. You take it. Linda, it's just lovely. <gasps> oh, you dropped it. Linda, you deliberately pushed it from my hand. I beg your pardon. I handed it to you and you let it slip from your fingers. Linda, what shall we do? Oh, don't implicate me in this. You're the one who dropped it. How can I ever face Roger with... You'd better have a good story. I'll, I'll have to confess that I did it. I Don't be a fool. It would be far better if Roger never knew what happened. But I couldn't lie to him. If you value your marriage, you'll do as I say. You can let him think that... that it was stolen. Yes, that's it. No, no, Linda, I can't. You must. Here, I'll help pick up the pieces. I just don't know what to do. Not I... in the wastebasket, Carol. You'll see them in there. But, Linda, I Put don't the think... the pieces in the pockets of your suit. Like this. You can dispose of them later. Please, this isn't right. Hurry, you'll be want... home in a minute. Hello there. <laughs> what are you two up to? Roger... Carol... The vase. She dropped it, Roger. I told her it was valuable, but... Oh, darling, I'm so Carol, sorry. Carol, weren't you I... putting the broken pieces in your pockets? Please, Roger, I can explain to you. She was trying to escape blame, Roger. She thought if she hid the evidence that you'd think it was stolen. No, I, I can't believe it. Is that true, Carol? No, Roger. I mean... Oh, darling, I... What about it, Linda? You can see for yourself what she was doing. That should be proof. Roger, listen to me. I'd rather not talk about it now, Carol. I can only say that I never thought you'd try to deceive me like this. It would have been a clever ruse, but it just didn't work. Please, Linda. I think you should also know, Roger, that she lost $200 of that money you gave her and then accused me of stealing it. Accused you? Carol, what's happened to you? It was just a misunderstanding, Roger. This has all been a misunderstanding. Excuse me. I won't be down for dinner. Roger, please wait. Too late now, Carol. Oh, Linda, how could you do it? How could I do what? You intentionally created that situation. Why? 
Why do you dislike me so? All I want is an opportunity to make Roger happy. Happy? What do you know about the kind of life Roger should have? Everything Roger is today, he owes to me. And everything he will be shall be the result of my guidance. My guidance, Carol. But I'm not standing in his way. Don't interrupt me. He married you under the stress of an emotion he naively calls love. But why are you so opposed to me? What possible good can you ever do him? You have no money, no connections, no standing. Why, you don't even know the fundamentals of our kind of life. What are you going to do? I'm going to smash you, Carol. And when I get through, you'll regret the day that you had the audacity to enter his life. All right, Linda. But there's something you should realize first. I'm going to fight back, Linda. I love Roger. And I'm going to fight with everything I have to hold him. Obsession, Surrender is Farewell, starring Joan Loring. The most lethal of organic poisons has an antidote, but not so with the slow-acting poison of the mind, compounded from suspicion, doubt, mistrust, jealousy, fear. Roger suffers from that subtle poison. And all the love and trust within the power of Carol is insufficient to neutralize its devastating progress. For this elixir of hate is compounded in the inscrutable privacy of a woman's mind. In the waiting room of Grand Central Station, Carol forces herself to continue the letter. The personal account of a woman's struggle for happiness in the face of a wild and unreasoning obsession. I should have known better than to try to fight you, Linda. I didn't have your weapons. I'd never learned your tactics. Your control over Roger's life had its roots in years of dominance. My power only lay in my love. And so the days slid into weeks, and everyone brought with it new humiliations. I remember one evening two weeks ago... Roger. Roger? Yes, what is it, Linda? You'll be happy to know that I found those gray suede shoes of mine I was looking for this morning. Oh, that's fine, Linda. I'm glad to hear it. And I found them in Carol's closet. <laughs> can you imagine it? Perhaps Carol can explain. Oh, I can't stand it any longer. I can't go on like this. Carol, I don't understand. Just it. leave me alone. Leave me alone. But I can't help you if you don't tell me what's wrong. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with her, Roger. She's merely clamoring for attention. No. No, Roger. I don't know what to do, Linda. She's changed so much during these past weeks. <laughs> I was wondering when you'd finally see her for what she is. Oh, stop it. Stop it, stop it. Please, Carol. And you ask me what's wrong. Are you completely blind, Roger? Don't listen to her. Believe me, I've tried to be a good wife. But what's the good of trying when she's living here? Carol, what are you saying? I'm saying that Linda's the one behind this. Yes, Roger, your precious sister, Linda. Linda. She deliberately set out to break up our marriage with her lies and implications and tricks. Roger, are you going to permit her to talk about your own sister like that? But it's true. And you can't deny it, Linda. But she's my sister, Carol. Yes, and I'm your wife. That is, if you can call this state of existence a marriage. I refuse to listen to any more. Are you coming, Roger? <laughs> you go on up, Linda. I want to talk with Carol. Very well. Good night, Roger. Oh, Roger, can't we get away from here? Can't we start out all over again? But, Carol, my business is here. And I can't walk out on Linda after all she's done for me. All right, then. If you won't walk out on Linda, I will. You, you, you can't mean that. What's the use of pretending? I don't know what to say. I, I've been so confused. Maybe she was right. Maybe I am ruining your life. So confused. My, my head aches so... Roger, you're ill. No, no, I'm all right. Let me feel your forehead. I, I'm just tired, that's all. Roger, you're burning up with fever. I, I, I have the strangest feeling like... Roger. Oh, darling. Carol, what 
have you done to him? He fainted. We must get a doctor. This is your fault, Carol. If you never have... mind that now, Linda. Can't you see he needs help? <laughs> He's resting quietly now. Is it serious, Doctor? Well, it could very easily turn into pneumonia. He's apparently been under some great strain because his resistance is abnormally low. Well, you can be sure, Doctor, that he'll get the very best care here. I'll leave these pills with you, Mrs. Cameron. For one moment, Doctor. I'll take those. But, well, all right. You'll have to watch him closely. If his temperature goes any higher, call me. We can take shifts, Doctor, so that one of us will be with him at all times. Is there anything else, Doctor? No, that's all. I'll stop by in the morning. Good night. Good night. Well, are you satisfied, Carol? I hold you responsible for this. I want you to stay away from Roger while I nurse him back to health. You can't ask me to do that. Roger needs me. Oh, oh, stop deluding yourself. I've tolerated a lot from you, Linda. I've taken your sarcasm and your humiliations and your cheap tricks... But I will not let you keep me away from Roger at a time like this. You'll do as I say, Carol. We'll see. I'm going into him now, and you can't... And I'll slap you again if you persist in disobeying me. Good night. During the next two days, you never left Roger's bedside, blocking me whenever I tried to see him. For the first time, I began to doubt myself. Was it true that Roger no longer needed me? On the third evening, we had our first hope that he might recover. It was a black, stormy night, and you were just starting up the stairs to Roger's room. Carol. Carol, hurry. Linda, what is it? Uh, I don't know. I thought for a moment I was going to say. It's no wonder you haven't slept for two nights. Hey. My eyes. Linda, you've worked until you're ill. I'm going to put you to bed. No. No, I must go to Roger. Don't worry about that now. Here, I'll take you to your room, and then, then I'll call the doctor. I'm so tired. Come on. Just a few more steps, and we'll be at the top. Let me rest a minute. Please. There. Just lean against me. I'm so weak. Oh, Roger. Is medicine? I'll take care of that. You're going to your room. Yes, yes. You take care of it, Carol. Here we are now. Mm. Now try to stand while I open the door. Mm. There. Come on over to the bed now. Yes. I want to sleep. You're going to be all right, Linda. Mm. Just lie there while I call the doctor. Hello, operator. Operator. Oh. Linda, the storm must have blown the lines down. I'm going out to get him. But you can't drive. I'll walk. It's two miles. I ran down the stairs, put on my coat, and started out the door. And I realized... I was the only one. The only one who could help you. No one would ever blame me if I didn't go out on a night like that. It was my one chance to get you out of my life. My one chance for a happy marriage with Roger. Why should I sacrifice my whole future for a person who'd given me nothing but pain? I hesitated a moment longer. And then I made my decision. going to be all right, Mrs. Cameron. If you hadn't come for me when you did, she might not have lasted until morning. Yes, Doctor, I know. You'd better get to bed yourself, young lady. Running around in that storm couldn't have done you any good. No, I'm all right. How is Roger? Completely out of danger. He'll oh. be up and around in a few days. I'm so grateful. Well, I'll be running along. I hope your sister-in-law realizes she owes her life to what you did tonight. I should have known, Linda, that nothing could ever straighten out that strange warp in your mind. But I did hope. I hoped and prayed that things would be different. 
Only to have those hopes smashed when I overheard you and Roger talking this afternoon. But you can't be serious about this, Linda, not after what's happened. We shouldn't have waited this long. If you weren't such an idealist, you'd understand. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand why the two of you can't live together in the same house. You know how it's been these past two months since Carol arrived. I tell you, the situation is impossible. But it's not fair of you to expect me to treat someone I love in that fashion. My mind's made up. Do you want me to tell Carol? I don't know what she'll think. That makes no difference. This is for your own good, Roger. I turned away then and walked slowly to my room. I left very calmly and quietly. So quietly that even as I write this, you probably don't know I've gone. Yes, I've given up the fight, Linda. And my surrender is farewell. Oh, Roger. Roger, darling. Hello, Carol. Roger. What are you doing here? When I discovered your clothes gone, I figured you'd be here at the station. Well, come home with me, Carol, please. No, Roger, I can never go back. But why, Carol? Why are you running away? It'll always be the same in that house, Roger. Once I'd hoped that Linda could change, but then I heard the two of you talking this afternoon. Well, I was going to tell you... You don't have to now. I still can't understand why you feel that you must leave just because Linda's leaving. Because Linda's leaving? But I thought that... Well, it seems that Linda's done a lot of thinking since the night of her collapse, and now she has the idea it'd be better for us if she left. Roger, I can't believe well, Naturally, it. I was upset. She's my sister, and I do love her. But uh, she said her mind was made up. Oh, Roger. Will you come home with me, Carol, please? Oh, yes, darling, I will. I will. Linda wanted to see you before she left. Maybe... Maybe I misjudged Linda. Maybe we could be friends. I, I was hoping you'd say that. That's all right, darling. I'll take your bags. Say, what have you been writing there? Nothing, Roger. Nothing at all. You have been listening to Obsession. Obsession.